Good morning. This is Peg Larson. I'm in the Minnesota Senate building, which is known as the MSB. So we have the SOB for the State Office Building and the MSB. So you know the acronyms for people where people are. Um, they did not have any hearings in the education area or any other area on Tuesday. They got off to a fairly contentious or a very contentious beginning in the House and not a very smooth one in the Senate. Um, then education did not meet on Wednesday because they had a function to go to where legislators are supposed to go and become friendly to each other. I don't know how successful that was. I hadn't talked to anybody. Uh, quite a few people did not go. Um, and on, so on Thursday, in the House and the Senate, they did have education hearings. In the House, they had two. Uh, Chair Sandra Erickson had her uh, education innovation and Chair Loon had her finance for education one in the afternoon. Now, I don't really understand it because they didn't do any bills. In Chair Erickson's committee, um, they did the legislative report on the workforce and um, the commissioner came and she talked about quite a few things. She talked about ESSA and she talked about the workforce and how great that's working and reminded people that if you don't uh, succeed in that, she can hold back 2% of your funding and that uh, you don't have to do a lot of reports for that, but they do get a report. I thought it was very interesting because she felt that that is, is working pretty well. I would like some feedback on that. They also talked about the need for counselors. There was one person who did come and testify about the need for counselors. And the commissioner did say that people or kids are falling behind because they get lost in the fray and that they do need more counselors. The other thing that she did talk about was um, long-term planning and ESSA. Um, she did talk about the fact, you know, that parents need to be very engaged in um, all of this, all these different programs and she's hoping that they have public hearings so that they can make sure that you do get parents out and talking about what's going on in the schools. And that was in uh, Chair Erickson's committee. Then in Chair Loon's committee they had the report on teacher licensure and that was done by the legislative um, auditor also. It's obvious that the Board of, of Licensure is not doing a very good job. They told stories about people who had applied were told to take certain courses and by the time they did it and got back it had already changed again. So there's a lot of different proposals out there to eliminate the board, eliminate the board of administrators and put it into one segment and um, have that be you know, what people would have to go through. They talked about temporary licenses and uh, special licenses all different ideas and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of legislation that comes out of that. They meet again on Tuesday in the House at uh, 8.15 and again at 5, so I think we'll finally start to hear some bills heard as there were no bills heard in the House. Have a wonderful afternoon and enjoy the sunshine. Greetings everybody. I don't know whether I should start with the good news or the bad news. I think I'll start with the good news. The good news is we've had uh, really good luck finding authors for bills in this very compressed environment we're operating in, especially on the Senate side so far. The bills, we had a lot of them, and there was quite a backup at the revisor's office, so Peg and I were worried about whether we're going to get everything launched in time. It looks like we're going to be able to do that. So that's, a, that's, that's the good news. Uh, the bad news, the frustrating part about it this year is that um, the remodeling is one issue, but just this partisan gridlock, it just permeates the air here. It's, uh, it's so disappointing to see it in this short session in particular, where there isn't enough time for those usual antics. And despite the exceedingly tight schedule, uh, there's no signs of any kind of uh, compromise on the big issues that are going to determine whether or not this session was even worth holding. The taxes, the, the tax bill, they disagree on what ought to be done and they've now linked taxes to unemployment compensation on the range. That's dead on arrival. Bonding, there was a statement today from Kurt Dowd, there would be no bonding bill that had you know, much in the way of any transit in it, especially uh, light rail. That's a non-starter. Um, 
And then transportation, there's just a, a world of difference as to how that should be funded. Should it be funded with one-time money and borrowing, or should there be some kind of long-term investment and some new revenue? So all we're getting right now is talking points and politicians appealing to their bases, which isn't really where most of us are. Most Minnesotans want something to happen. So that's tough. It's hard. I guess there's another piece of good news, at least in the Senate, Senator Chuck Weger has apparently gotten the wiggle room or else taken it upon himself to extend the deadline. So it looks, look, the House on the other hand is not doing much in terms of meeting and, and hasn't, there's been no talk about extending deadlines over there. But Chuck Weger is actually uh, fighting for having sufficient time to hear bills. So that's another little piece of good news in an otherwise so far frustrating start to the session. Another thing that's just kind of difficult is that the House chamber, the fire marshal says there's room for 258 people. I don't know if I'll ever in the course of the session be one of those lucky people that's going to get to go up and watch the House function. There's limited media passes so it's kind of like the old tasty bread commercials. What's going on over there? It's being baked while we sleep. We, we're not, we don't have access to it. And then the Capitol itself really should be shut down. The air in the basement is scary. You walk through those tunnels and there's this gray mist in front of you and you don't know if it's asbestos or lead or just silica dust. So it's frustrating, but we're troopers. We're here for the good fight. We hope that in the end, and, and very soon, the adults take over and the legislature realizes it's got a responsibility to fulfill, and we, and we hope they'll come to some reasonable conclusions on transportation, taxes, bonding, and education. With that, again, we're fighting the good fight, but it's been a rather frustrating week. Talk to you next week.